understanding ASCE slash SEI7 risk categories to determine structural performance. Welcome to Building Knowledge 101. In this video, we look at the risk categories defined by the American Society of Civil Engineers and Structural Engineering Institute standard ASCE slash SEI7 to determine structural performance and project specific wind loads. Then the other area, and there was a risk factor or importance factor. So ASCE 7 uses risk categories to define the importance factor of each project you're looking up. And as you move up the scale in risk categories, it to me reflects an increasing value of the facility to the community. As the importance increases, so does the associated wind and snow loads used to evaluate the structural performance of the facility. So when you look at this, and you're going to see again, we have different importance factors, and that really kind of drives the value of the project to the uh, community. Also, as you kind of think about a rule of thumb here, as your importance factor moves up, that's also driven by the ease of evacuating people from the facility. If it's more difficult or more timely, or there are more people in the facility, so evacuating everyone safely takes more time, the risk factor goes higher or increases. So let's look at some examples of what these are. AFC 7 has different wind speeds based upon what the risk factor is for each project. So it's critical that we get the correct risk category and the appropriate wind speed maps. In all situations, if you have concerns about determining the category, do get in touch with the local authorities because they're going to be the ones that can help you out best with that. So risk category one would be a structure that would have minimal impact on the community if it was lost. So think about barns, warehouses, storage facilities, structures that don't house people, uh, don't have critical functions, or structures that are isolated from others. So if they were damaged during a, a storm, they wouldn't risk blowing material damaging adjacent buildings. So here you can see we have a wind map that's associated with risk category one. And what we're looking at is where's the 140 mile an hour wind zone? So you can see that's way down here. So the 140 mile an hour wind zone is really down here on the bottom part of Florida. So risk categories one, again, they're, they're not as valuable to the community. So we're not seeing as large area that incorporates risk category one. Here's an example of an agricultural facility. This would be risk category one. You can see it's by itself. There aren't that many people here. If this building was damaged and, it, and debris was blowing, there aren't other facilities around it that could be impacted by it. Now, risk category two is the most common type used. This includes uh, one and two family homes. It could also be commercial buildings, retail facilities. This could be a building that does contain hazardous material that would not pose a major threat to the public. So with this risk category two, when we're looking at where the 140 mile an hour wind zone is, now it's moved up. You can see it's further up here. It's basically about 100 miles north of St. Augustine. So it's moved up. So we've got more of the state of Florida in risk category two now. So our 140 mile an hour wind zone has moved up. So here's an example of your typical risk category two building, commercial facility. Looking at risk category three, and we're now discussing buildings and structures that if it was lost, it would represent a substantial hardship to the local community. So this is the type of project that provides a service to the community, and if it was lost, it would have a negative impact on the community. Think of facilities like a medical facility, a doctor's office, something, a school, a university would be, fall into that category. So here's our wind map, and you can see now much more of the East Coast is falling under the 140 mile an hour wind and here into the panhandle. So you can see greater areas, more of the coast is in the 140 mile an hour category. And again, I mentioned that would probably be a university building. So you can see that as we increase in the importance factor, we're moving the 140 mile an hour wind zone deeper inland so that it takes in more land, more geography. Now the top category, the last one is risk category four. And these are facilities that if lost, it would have a major negative impact upon the community. They provide a critical needed service or a function that if it was lost, it could not be replaced quickly and would leave the community without a critically needed service. So we look at the map now, we can see the 140 mile an hour wind band has moved way inward. So it's taking in a lot more territory now. So risk category four covers a lot more territory. So it brings in more in. So we're talking again about 
medical facilities, hospitals, fire departments, police departments. Again, facilities that are critical to the community. That is all we have time for in this video. If you'd like to watch more of our 101 video series, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Conair Company, Inc.